Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am here to let you know that I have a lot of green flags, okay? I don't wanna toot my own horn or anything, but toot toot, baby. I love baseball, I love sports, I love to cook, I love animals, and I'm also probably the most loyal person that you will ever come across in your entire life. Now you might be wondering, Swilly, how, how could you ever prove that to me? Well, listen, I willingly chose to be an Anaheim Angels fan. Yes, I said Anaheim Angels. We're rocking the Anaheim Angels today because, well, let's be honest, they're the Anaheim Angels. But I'm also a masochist because I chose this life willingly and now I have to suffer with the consequences. I do feel as your resident Angels fan that it is my duty to give you a brutally honest Angels team preview for the 2024 season. Because for a team that is seemingly so irrelevant, we just cannot stay out of baseball news ever. I don't get it. I don't understand. There is a lot of negativity surrounding this team, maybe rightfully so, but I do believe that there are quite a few bright spots that everybody should be looking at. I'm gonna give you my brutal and honest thoughts on the Angels heading into 2024, and I'm gonna set you up so that when you're watching Mike Trout's 2024 MVP campaign, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I know who Logan Ohapi is. That kid is the second hardest hitting catcher in Major League Baseball, so you're welcome. Without further ado, let's jump right in. We gotta shorten the season, man. It's too many dang games. 162 games in 185, three days, whatever it is. <laughs> we gotta shorten this bad boy up. Let's On November 8th, 2023, the Angels hired Ron Washington to be their skipper. Now, I'm just gonna come out and say this is the win of the off season for us. I don't understand why he felt like he wanted to come poach in Anaheim. Actually, I'm gonna be honest with you, I do. And I don't care what the media says. Anaheim is a fantastic place to play ball and coach. I'm sorry. Look at the media attention that you don't get compared compared to some other big ball clubs. Look at where you're living. Look at the fan base. It's an attractive place to come. Phil Nevin was let go at the end of the 2023 season. He was the interim head coach when Joe Madden got fired and he was given a one year contract when, when there was still a possibility of a sale. Now, now there's no sale, so. <sighs> Manassian and Washington already had a good relationship as they both worked for the Braves for a period of time. Manassian has nothing but great things to say about Wash and very clearly respects him as a human and as a coach. So I think it's a great fit because, well, for a number of reasons, but that relationship between head coach and GM is gonna be huge. We haven't experienced that under Manassian yet, so. I love it. With Washington's infield coaching skills and his ability to relate and tap into young talent, I think he's gonna get the most out of this team that he possibly can. We have a lot of young guys on the roster that could potentially be the core of this franchise moving forward. So I'm really excited to see what he can do with these young guys. I'm gonna run through this list of additions and subtractions as of February 21st. Some things might have changed, but right off the bat, we really loaded up that bullpen, baby. And and the amount of things that we lost is pretty long. But additions to the 40 man roster, like I said, are all relievers except for Aaron Hicks. I think Aaron Hicks is fine. There were other outfield options at the time, I wish we could have maybe grabbed somebody else. At this point in time, Cody Bellinger still has not signed with a ball club yet. Not saying I wanna shell out a lot of money for a guy like him, but I do think he's better than Aaron Hicks. But you know, as a fourth outfielder, fifth outfielder, sure, why not? The biggest acquisition for us was definitely Robert Stevenson, relief pitcher from the Rays. He showed great promise last year. He was super solid. I'm so excited to add him to the bullpen. I think he's on a three-year contract. Everybody else, I mean, Luis Garcia, Adam Kolarek, Adam Simber, you know, guys that definitely make our bullpen better. Uh, subtractions, well, you see one big name on there, obviously. Uh, Shohei Otani is a big hole to fill no matter how you slice it. But we've also lost a few guys that I'm a little sad about, not because of talent necessarily, but just because I enjoyed watching them and I just think that they're like good human beings. Obviously, Jared Walsh is a big one. Walsh, he was great in 2021, suffered from some COVID complications in 2022 and 2023. He wasn't sleeping. He was running into wall, like bad, bad stuff going on in his brain. So hasn't really been able to bounce back from that yet, which is unfortunate, but obviously we're hoping for the best for him. Sad to see Moose go just because he's a great clubhouse guy, but I understand he didn't really put up the best numbers with us. Randall Gritchick has gotten picked up, but I forget who picked him up. I'll put it somewhere, I forget. <laughs> now Gio Urshela, I would love to bring back Gio. I don't really know why 
why we haven't re-signed him yet. I can't imagine he's asking for like all of the money in the world. This is post-production, post-film, uh, future me. We didn't get Gio. No. Detroit got him. Good for Detroit. I'm not upset. It's fine. Aaron Lou, bye. See you later. Trey Cabbage just has promised, but that K rate, baby, that strikeout rate was high. He went to the Astros organization, so he's probably gonna hit some bombs against us this year, but whatever. It's me again. I probably forgot the most important loss of the entire off season, so I'm probably a fake fan to some of you. I'll work hard to regain your trust again. We lost David Fletcher. The whole off season was pretty much ruined. Hi. I'm David Fletcher. I play baseball. I play baseball. I play baseball. I play baseball. Now, a lot of the thought process here makes sense. We had a bad bullpen last year, especially in the second half. Our bullpen in the first half of the season had a 4.06 ERA. We walked 146, but we struck out 312. Our bullpen had a 1.36 whip and a 292 bat bit. So not too shabby. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's fantastic, but it could be worse. Now, second half, Second half of the season, when things really fell apart. 5.82 ERA in the second half of the season. 144 walks to 284 strikeouts. 1.66 whip. Yep, that's not gonna get the job done. And a 331 bat bib. Now our bullpen was not that great to start, so the improvements, I wouldn't say put us like top five, but I do think that this is a big improvement just in general. Adding guys like Robert Stevenson and bringing back Matt Moore definitely helped the bullpen now, I think good teams have good bullpens, so we'll see. The biggest concern for me is that we have not replaced our ace. It's concerning, it's head scratching, it's everything in between. It seems as if the front office is putting a lot of trust into some of our high ceiling guys. And by high ceiling, I'm talking Patrick Sandoval, Reed Detmers, Griffin Canning, Chase Silseth, which is 80% of our rotation, but it's fine. Our hitting wasn't as much of an issue in 2023. And the DH spot is now open for guys like Trout and Rendon if needed. The Halos in 2023 were above average in quite a few stats, including slugging, OPS, and home runs. So power and hitting wasn't really the issue, although we did strike out a lot and we didn't take enough walks. I think that that partially has to do with the amount of young talent that we had last year. So I'm hoping that some of these young guys can take strides with more plate appearances. Overall, I don't think the Halos had a bad off season, but not every issue was fixed despite having the money to spend in 2024. There are still a few headlining free agents available. So we'll see. Could change, will it? I don't know. I would love for us to sign a guy like Snell or Monty. It would give us more lefties in our rotation than righties, which is fine, I guess. Adding somebody like JD Martinez could improve our DH spot, but again, I don't mind the idea of having that spot open for guys like Trout and Rendon if needed. I think overall, if I had to give the Halos a letter grade, I would give them like a C plus. And the reason why it's plus is because of the Ron Washington hire. That was the win of the off season. Stop, McNeil did see it. Now the throw goes to first and the ball gets away and now Lindor is gonna try to score. Let's take a really quick look at the depth chart just to see what Fangraphs is kind of projecting some of these players to play. The one that sticks out to me really is Keefe at second over Drury. Fangraphs loves Luis Renjifo and Angel fans are not going to want to hear it. I like Keefe. I think that he has gotten significantly better between 2022 and 2023. He decreased his strikeout rate. He upped his walk rate. He's hitting the ball harder. He was better in the second half, yes, but I understand why Fangraphs likes Ren Hifo at second base more than Drury. I don't think that that's gonna necessarily be the case, at least to start off, but I could be wrong. That right field is looking a little rough, folks, but we'll get into that in a few minutes. Fangraphs is projecting Reed Detmers to be the starter. I also ran a poll on Twitter, and it does seem like Angel fans agree with that, that Detmers will be the starter on opening day. I initially thought that it was gonna be Sandy. I think either way, you could throw a dart at all their faces and whoever it lands on, you're gonna have a fair shot. Why have we not replaced Show? Like we have the money. I don't, I don't get it. 
it. SD is slotted in to be our closer still. Poor SD man, he had a great start to 2023 and then just kind of shit the bed the second half of the season. We have Robert Stevenson, Matt Moore, Jose Soriano, Luis Garcia, Adam Simber, Jose Cisnero, Ben Joyce, Andrew Wance, and Jose Suarez. Let's quickly take a look and see how each position breaks down against the rest of the league. This will be fun, try not to cry. The Angels catching depth is ranked 22nd among all teams in the league. That's gonna make some Angel fans angry. The Angels first baseman depth is 16th in the league. The Angels second base depth is 24th in the league. So take that how you will. The Angels third baseman depth is ranked 13th in the league. I'm telling you, all of these positions are gonna anger Angels fans for different reasons. Our shortstop depth is 12th, so that's a good sign, right? Our left field depth is ranked 12th in the league. Our center field depth is ranked fourth. Yay, top five in something. Shield your eyes, Halo fans. We are dead last in right field, which I get it. I understand. Fangraphs doesn't really like Mickey Moniak a whole lot. And then you got Joe Adele and then Aaron Hicks behind him. Our starting pitching depth is ranked 24th. Also totally makes sense. I, I get it. Despite the depth added this off season, our bullpen is still ranked 23rd in the league, which again, I get it. There's a couple of guys in here that I'm looking at funny in a good way, and then the rest of them are just kind of big question marks, to be honest. And lastly, our DH spot, uh, 23rd in the league. So it's rough out here, okay? It's rough. But the good thing is there's a lot of high upside, which can make things fun for Halo fans this year. Let's briefly take a look at the Angels roster 2024 projections. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this for a couple of reasons. One, there's no night mode on fan graphs and it absolutely kills me. I think it should be a federal law that every website needs to have night mode. And two, it's just a lot of numbers and I don't want to look at all of them. We're just going to highlight some of the interesting ones. I need sunglasses to look at this at nighttime. It hurts my eyeballs. And this is among hitters, by the way, not all players, just hitters. Neto being projected second in war just makes my heart full. It makes sense. He's a shortstop. I get it. But if he can really hammer close to 20 home runs, have some stolen bases, I'm going to be happy. If you forget, he was called up in April of last year. He only had 40-ish games in minor league baseball, maybe 50. And he filled in pretty well at the shortstop spot. He's great defensively, just needs to bring up that walk number a bit. He doesn't chase a whole ton, so. Joe Adele is projected to hit 13 home runs in a little under 300 plate appearances. So if he can find it, <laughs> he can find it and he can take over that starting spot, we're talking close to 30 home runs. It could happen. Please, the skills are there. We just, I think, ah, Joe Adele. He's still only projected to have an 89 WRC plus, so not great. But if we could see some improvement in the Ks and the walks, I'm gonna be happy. Now, Trout's projections, although heavy on games and plate appearances, would be close to career lows still which is crazy. 37 home runs, 100 runs, 95 RBIs, 11.6 walk percentage, 314 BAPIP, 133 WRC plus. Yeah, that would be a career low for him. God, he's so fucking good at baseball. Do I think he's gonna play 146 games? Uh, no, I don't. Maybe he plays 146 games, but a good chunk of those are at the DH spot, although he hasn't historically been great at DH. Maybe that can change with more experience. Fangraphs is projecting a bit of regression, but I'm hopeful that he sits somewhere in between these projections and his past career numbers. I have a gut feeling slash hope slash daily prayer that he gets maybe somewhere around like a 270 average, 380 on base and like a 550 slug. He just needs to stay healthy. I don't think all hope is lost. Although a lot of people are writing him off. How do you write off Mike Trout? You should be arrested for that. Another surprise again, Renjifo is sitting fifth. Renjifo is sitting at a 2.2 war and I love it. Again, Fangraphs really likes Luis Renjifo this year. So you're seeing the difference of Trout seeing the same thing. He's bringing it away from his body. And then he's taking it. I want to quickly touch on three hitters that I'm really looking forward to watching this season and that I think you should be watching too. Up first is Taylor Ward. Uh, Taylor Ward is projected to have a 263 batting average, 346 on base percentage, a 450 slug, and a 118 WRC plus in 2024. After another injury that cut his season short, Wardy is due for a full healthy season. Both injuries were freak accidents. In 2022, he ran into a wall. And in 2023, Alec Manoa, 
threw a baseball at his face, and I will not forgive him for that. Wardy is in the top third of the league in X Woba, average exit velocity, chase percentage, whiff percentage, and range, aka outs above average. The numbers are there. If we want to make any sort of noise at all, Wardy has to have a productive season. There's a decent amount of red here. I'm not saying that it's mind blowing or anything like that, but I do love to see that chase percentage nice and low. I love to see the whiff rate nice and low. I love to see the average exit velocity high. And he is hitting the ball harder than half the league. So, Wardy, what do you say? No freak accidents, right? The next halo that I'm keeping an eye on in 2024 is Zach Neto. Neto is another kid that had an injury that may have affected his second half. Neto is due for a better year in his first full. Full MLB season. Had some back issues, was out for about two months. I think with those back issues, it just kind of affected the second half of the season a bit. I'm super stoked to see the Ron Washington effect on a kid that has already proved to be a lockdown shortstop defensively. As you can see on Baseball Savant, the fielding numbers are close to the top 25% of the league. He is a fantastic shortstop and is still only 23 years old. He's already proved that he has plate discipline despite not being a qualified hitter in 2023. He had a 25.2% whiff rate in 2023, which is top 25% in the league. Again, at 22. That is pretty impressive. Fangraphs is projecting 21 home runs in 2024. If we can get 15 home runs in like a 750 OPS with lockdown D at short, I'm gonna be the happiest camper you've ever met in your entire life. Lastly, I'm going to be raving about Logan Ohoppy. Ohoppy had 14 home runs in 200 plate appearances in 2023. Ohapi has a 15.7% barrel rate, which is 23rd among 368 batters in Major League Baseball that had at least 190 plate appearances. Long story short, he hits the shit out of the ball and with a full season ahead of him post shoulder surgery, he should be primed for a great 2024. He has a 46.7% hard hit rate, which is ninth among catchers, 10.6% barrel rate per plate appearance, which is third amongst all catchers at 20, at 20. The kid's gonna be a stud, okay? Fangraphs is projecting the Halos to win about 77 games in 2024. Dakota likes the Angels to win 74 games in 2024. And most sports books have the Angels at around 70 and a half or 71 and a half wins. I believe the Halos can win 88 game. No, I'm just, I can't even can't even finish the sentence. I like the Halos to win 72 games in 2024. Although things may seem a bit grim in Anaheim, I do think that there is reason to be excited or hopeful. I'm so stoked to see how the young guys perform under a guy like Ron Washington, who is gonna squeeze every bit of talent out of not just the young guys, but the team as a whole. There's a ton of question marks going into 2024, but I think that's okay. I mean, obviously every team wants to contend, and I do think that the ceiling for this group is very high, but it's just that, it's a ceiling. There is still a lot of what if in the air. We do have the potential to let our young guys grow and then maybe deal some other guys at the deadline to maybe replenish our farm system. I think our owner forgot that you, you gotta have a, you gotta have a farm system. You gotta have guys ready to come up. The bane of my existence. But there is a lot to be excited with these young guys. I'm very excited to see them grow in 2024. That's all I got. Let me know how you feel about my team preview. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't already, feel free to like the video only if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more content from me in the future. I love you so much. And remember, do not let sports affect your mental health. I love you and I will see you soon. Bye.